the weekend of Reda seminars was coming to a wrap. We had our last seminar here at Inchon at the Team Roots Jack John location. The seminar went as usual. I got to see the same seminar three times. But what was good about this one was that I got to see one of our old students that used to train with us when he was a blue belt. Then he went off to the military and he moved away. So I haven't really had the opportunity to see him much lately. He has a very squirrely style of guard pass. And what I mean by that, he's always trying to jump past your legs to pass your guard. I have a very squirrely style of open guard. This is the type of guard pass that I really like. I really enjoy when people try to pass like this. Eventually, I was able to grab one of his squirrely legs and put him down where I began to crush him with my 25 kilogram weight advantage. And some people would say that a weight advantage is not really all that important in jiu-jitsu. And those people would be the ones who are always the heavier guys in jiu-jitsu. Yeah, gravity, gravity sucks. Especially when the guy on top of you is a lot bigger than you. But it was nice to catch up, you know, we had a lot of bear hugs here. I was trying to take his back so I could choke him out. Overall, we just had a great time catching up with each other. We're at Gangnam Station where we're going to the Art Monster Pub. We're going to be meeting a guy named Andrew who is the owner of the Art Monster Brewery. Probably won't be able to film because I don't know him that well. It's kind of awkward to whip out a camera when there's people that you don't know so well. It can kind of be interpreted as a weird thing to do. <laughs> gonna conclude the end of our trip pretty much here. I hope it's gonna be a long and fun night. It's like Hong Kong. Andrew started his pub a long time ago and he has a lot of pubs. Sick. I think something like eight pubs. It's very pretty. And he's planning opening 20 more pubs this year, he said, so he's light years ahead of us right now. Yeah. Like the um, legendary Korean diva. Oh. Very, very famous. Yeah. Well, Jesse, Hasa, Amjo, they're all famous. Yeah. Usually when I meet people in the industry, it's not about trying to get tips from people. It's more just about trying to forge a relationship with someone who kind of has to deal with the same things that you have to deal with on a daily basis. And in that sense, running a brewery is actually a really lonely task. There's not very many people who really understand what goes into operating this type of business. And Art Monster has won a lot of beer awards. I've won a lot of awards and competitions for their beer. I mean, just look at this wall, it's racked. Racked with awards that they won in competition. And since we had decided to stay the night, Anyways, the morning before we head back to Busan, I was able to sneak in one more training session over at the Pundong John Frankel Gym, five minutes walk from my mother's house. It always feels good to come back to a place that you haven't been to in a while. And this is one of those gyms. I used to come here quite often back in the day. My first role was with a really strong white belt. He caught me by surprise, actually. He caught me in a darse and had a pretty tight choke in. It goes to show you can never take it too easily because someone can always surprise you with one of these chokes. Probably the coolest thing about being a black belt in jiu-jitsu is it feels like you can almost look into the future. And what I mean by that is if a guy who's a lot less experienced than you is doing jiu-jitsu with you, you can kind of predict what he's trying to do based off of early movements. And before he's actually fully into the move or into the attack that he was thinking, you're already into the next two or three counters. And in that sense, I guess jujitsu is kind of like chess. That's an analogy that a lot of people will say, like, oh, jujitsu is kind of like chess. But honestly, I don't think that's a good analogy because in chess, people take turns making moves. You might make a move, then I might make a move. Then it'd be my turn to make a move. But when you see like a good wrestling match and you see a guy who's dominating the performance of a match. Pretty much that guy is just jacking all of the moves. And what I mean by that is he's making a move and he's making the next move, the next move, and the next move. And before his opponent can make a move, he takes his move and makes that move too. That's kind of like the right approach if you want to be good at competition. You gotta have that wrestler's tough mentality. And in that aspect, I think it's really nothing like chess. Although I guess you could do jujitsu kind of like chess too. So 
So the second roll is coming to an end, and it seems today, for the rolls, the more stripes the blue belt has, the harder I go on them. I don't know, I guess it was just one of those chill days. But I really start to turn up the fire on this last roll here. Usually when you see a guy with a four stripe blue belt, you know he can handle some pain and some pressure. So for this roll, I think you can kind of see what I was talking about. The whole roll, I was just trying to make it impossible for him to set his guard. There's going to be a position where the guy feels most comfortable. And that's the position that you never want to give to the guy. You never want him to feel comfortable. You always want him to be reacting to your intention. And if you're able to do that, you're going to win the match. I've always set goals for myself so that I would be more dedicated to my training. And what I get from the training is all the time and effort that I put into the training is dedicated to meeting that one goal. And that one goal brings me better health benefits, keeps me engaged in the craft. And there's pretty much a relentless pursuit for more efficiency in my training. It's gotten to a point where the goal is no longer to just win a match or win a medal at a tournament. The goal is to win that match in a certain way, to have some level of dominance in the match. And if you start to find little goals within your goals, you could be like, oh, I want to use that move during this match that I'm not very good at right now. And things just become so much more interesting to have those goals and to have those guidelines. Pursuit of more efficiency, to, to try to be the best that you can be at something. It's truly a satisfying thing to have in my life. It doesn't have to just be jiu-jitsu. Sometimes it could be with brewing beer. It could be related to your job. That relentless pursuit to be the best that you can be. In jiu-jitsu or in life in general.